Hi friends! In this video, I'll show you four simple but very useful probes that allow quickly and without additional equipment to diagnose the malfunction of electronic devices, power supplies, and even electric motors. So, the first in the list is a logical probe. The main purpose of a logic probe is to determine the logic signal at the necessary points in the circuit. At high level signal, the red LED will light up. At low level, the green one. The third LED indicates the presence of the supply voltage. In addition to the main purpose, such device can determine the polarity of power sources. If the measuring probe is connected to the plus, then the red indicator will light up. If it is connected to the minus of the source, light up the green LED. You can also check the diodes and some circuits. You can check the PWM signal. If it is low frequency, the LEDs will blink alternately. If the signal is high frequency, then our eye will not be able to see the high frequency of blinking, and we will see the simultaneous glow of both LEDs. Device doesn't have a power source inside. It connected directly to the power outputs of the device under test, thereby ensuring synchronization and eliminating false probe readings. Working is very easy. We connect the power wires to the source, for example, the power outputs of the tested microcircuit or board. We connect the minus measuring wire to the power minus and touch the positive measuring prop to the points where you want to check the signal. Device assembled on a compact printed circuit board. The circuit contains just one CD4011 chip, which includes four logic elements, two NAND. One of the analogs is KR1561LA7. Here we used three logic elements out of four. Now you can see the truth table of the logical element NAND. To understand the principle of operation of the probe, you need to remember that the output of such an element will be low only if there are a high level at all its inputs. In any other case, the output will be high. The first case, there are no logical signal at the input. Resistor R1 provides a higher level at the inputs of the first element. Therefore, the output is low and the green diode doesn't light up. The inputs of the lower element are pulled up to ground by a resistor, which provides a low level at the inputs, so we got a higher level at the output. This high level is fed to the inputs of the third element. According to the truth table, with the high level on the inputs, the output will be low. The red LED will also not glow. The second case is a low level on the prop. The inputs of the first element are also low, therefore the output is high and the green indicator is on. At the bottom of the diagram, the following happens. The inputs of the first element are low. The output is high. This high level appears at the inputs of the second element, therefore its output will be low, and the red LED will not glow. The first case is a high level on the prop. The inputs of the lower element will also be high, hence the output is low. This low level goes to the inputs of the third element, and we remember that if the inputs are low, the output will be high which leads to the glow of the red indicator. At the same time, we have a high level at the inputs of another element and a low level at the output, so the green indicator doesn't light up. The device is protected against reverse power supply polarity. The diode at the input is responsible for this. The housing of the probe is printed on a 3D printer, but the regular marker case is also convenient. In the description, you can find a link to the page where the printable model was downloaded from. The next tester allows you to determine the operation of DC-DC converters and many power adapters without any additional devices. Everything is so simple here that there is no need to use a printed circuit board. But if PCB are still needed, then welcome to the JLC PCB website it is one of the largest PCB manufacturers with huge production capacity. 
the company will produce any boards for you, regardless of the size, shape, and number of layers. You have a large selection of board thicknesses, solder mask colors, and track coatings. Services for industrial 3D printing, the creation of SMD stencils, and even the assembly of circuit boards are also available. And all this is offered at reasonable prices with the quality at the highest level. You will find a link to the JLC website in the description. As we know, almost any non-isolated DC-DC converter, step-up, step-down, or sepic, has a chalk in its composition. When our prop brought the RF devices, for example, to the DC-DC converter chalk, an EMF of sufficient value is induced in it to illuminate the LED. The same thing will happen if we bring our indicator to the pulse transformers of power supplies. It is worth to note that in some cases the LED will light up only if the under-test power supply is loaded. The prop circuit consists of only two elements, a chalk on a ferrite dumbbell and an LED. As a core you can also use a rod, literally any size, within reason. A winding on it isn't critical. The wire diameter is an average 0.1 mm. The LED is also any. It is connected in parallel to the winding and the polarity of the connection isn't important. This simple and very useful little thing can be made by anyone in just a minute. Next device will allow you to check 5V USB sources under load. Previously, I have already shown USB current stabilized electronic loads which made it possible to maintain a given current value and smoothly change this value. This load is much simpler and, by the way, the Chinese sell similar things. Such a load would allow you to load any 5 volt USB output with a current of either 1 or 2 amps. It works as follows. Insert the load into the USB port by turning on the first toggle switch. The port is loaded with a current of 1 ampere, the corresponding LED lights up. Turning on of the next switch connects the second resistance in parallel, loading the same port with a current of 2 amps, the second LED lights up. To assemble this device, we need a pair of powerful 5 to 5.1 ohm resistors with a power from 7 to 10 watts, a pair of switches, preferably with a current of 1 to 2 amps, a pair of 3 or 5 mm LEDs, a male USB connector. It is worth noting that during operation, the resistors will heat up quite noticeably. This prop is a vivid demonstration of ohms low in action. Given a port voltage of 5 volts and a load resistor of 5 ohms, the current in the circuit will be about 1 ampere. Adding a second resistor of the same type in parallel will reduce the load resistance by half, therefore the current doubles. Next we can make a calculation of the power dissipated on the resistors. In the case of a current of 2 amps, the power dissipated for the resistors will be about 10 watts. And this is very hot, so be careful. To improve the thermal regime, a radiator can be glued to the resistors. Such a load in conjunction with a USB tester will allow you to load power supplies and monitor its output characteristics at certain currents, study the drawdown, and so on. You can also measure the capacity of power banks without taking into account losses in a converter. This load is quite useful in many cases. I already talked about the next device in one of the previous videos an indicator or finder of short-circuited turns. It allows you to instantly find a short circuit in electric motors and in some transformers. The presented circuit is realized in industrial detector of short-circuited turns IKZ3. I have shown this circuit before. This time, there is nothing special except that I made a new board on DIP components and another one on SMD. Of course, the boards can be downloaded along with the full archive of the project from the link in the description. The device works like this. Bring the chalk to the detector, for example, the rotor of the electric motor and rotate it. Or you can move the detector itself. If there are short-circuited turns in a certain place, the red LED will light up. If there is no short circuit, 
the green indicator will light up. The device is powered by a free wall lithium tablet, and given that you will use the device infrequently and for a short time, such a tablet will serve a very long time. There are only 5 NPN transistors in the circuit, which aren't particularly critical and can be changed to others. The circuit consists of two parts, transmitted and receiving. There are a pair of tugs of similar size, which are wound of ferrite dumbbells. The indicated inductance of the tugs, both in the case of the transmitter and in the case of the receiver, can be deviated downward by 30 to 50 percent. The setup of the detector is as follows. We rotate the tuning resistor until the red LED goes out and the green one lights up. This resistor provides the sensitivity control of the device. That's all today. Please don't forget to rate this video, subscribe to my Instagram. All the necessary links, circuits, printed circuit boards, etc. as always can be downloaded along with the general project archive from the link in the description. Well, on this I say goodbye until we meet again. With you, as always, was Kassian TV.